The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Well, after a wild week of Fed stuff, we are now trading below where we were during the Fed time, which brings us to an old market axiom. If good news does not make the market go up, what will make the market go up? I think that there's something not right with the stock market. If you take a look at the daily chart that I posted into the Tiger TV today, showing the Dow Jones triple top that is formed. We made a marginally higher high uh, than we did in May. Of course, we, we went sharply higher in NASDAQ, mainly because of the of the big NASDAQ stocks that, you know, move the market, Apple, Google, and Amazon, and, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of them, Priceline. So anyway, anyway, those those markets are still going higher, much like we did in 2000. But we have reached a, a real important spot. Uh, I posted the monthly chart going back to 1997, showing you that uh, five-point reverse wave pattern that we have going on in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So that's very important. We hit some really strong cycle stuff on Thursday. That was the, the, uh, the full moon. And we also had the autumn equinox uh, occur over the weekend. And so unless the market uh, can take this top out that we made last Thursday, uh, we're going lower. This long-ranging bar that we had in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, if you'll go back and look at your charts, every time you've had one of these days where the market's down more than 150 Dow points, it does continue lower. It might not go a lot lower, but it does go lower. Uh, this, this particular time it has potential to go a great deal lower just because of the fact that the market did not react to the news uh, very well. That's what uh, that's the way I'm, I'm reading this at this particular time. Uh, all of these patterns that we've seen over the past um, oh, three or four months, I mean, I've been watching him go to new high ground. is just really, uh, you know, really amazing. But, you know, they have not gone, you know, crazily to the upside. So that's why we're, we're keeping an eye, uh, you know, very closely watched. I wanted to post one chart that, uh, of course, my, one of my favorite charts, is the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index chart, and I wanted to put it in because it has some things that I think are even more important. And if you'll take a look at it, you'll see that the range from uh, 2011 uh, was, uh, you know, roughly uh, about uh, 1,500 uh, net, uh, New York Stock Exchange Index points, and the high that we made on Thursday, the 19th of September, was an exact 1.618 expansion of that number, and it was also an exact 1.27 expansion of the high that we made in June. So uh, if you like Fibonacci numbers, you know, these are the kind of numbers that, that pop up to me that tell me that they're very important. And this is the most active, or not the most active, but it's the fairest of all the indices because it's cap it's capitalization weighted and it has over 6000 stocks in it of the largest stocks in the world and that's on a global basis also so um and my my feeling is is we're going lower uh the question is is whether we're going to go sharply lower now or just stay here for a bit but if we take out the high on September the 18th on that full moon day September 19th then I would assume that uh, the market is uh, going up a lot more, and, uh, you know, I would be wrong uh, once again. But this time I'm very, very, uh, uh, just very, very bearish, just because of those, the way the market reacted to the news. Folks, I've been in this business a long time, and I can remember one of the my biggest turning points in my, my trading career was in 1975. I had come back from my, my big loss in 74, and I had, it was the end of 75, it was almost January of 76, because I started working for Drexel in February of 76, and uh, the news, I was in soybeans, very heavily in soybeans. I had, between all my uh, relatives and customers and friends and everything that I knew, we had well over 1,200 customers and uh, in beans, oil, and meal. And the market was so bullish that uh, they were calling beans to be up four or five limits 
and uh, the only beans that were going to be left were the beans in the Smithsonian Institute. And when I started seeing stuff like that, I'd been through it before, so I just started writing sell tickets, just selling on the opening. And uh, I ended up getting out, and the market opened just slightly higher and, uh, you know, just went down for five days limit and uh, kept, kept going down for another year. Uh, so when the news is out there and the market does not respond well to it, then that's it. Personally, I think something happens to the Fed. I mean, they make this announcement. These are, these are not stupid people, folks. I, I, I know you're aware of that. They're all very, uh, very, uh, very uh, astute economists and things. And why they didn't do this, there must be a reason behind it. Why, I do not know, you know, what, uh, you know, what that is. Uh, someone asked a question about the Bradley model. Uh, the Bradley model is not working, as near as I can tell. We haven't went sharply higher in the New York Stock Exchange Index. We've went 1.27 higher, but that's that's the maximum that it could pack, possibly do. So remember, that's a very long-term cycle. So you can't really, uh, you know, really put a, uh, 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 a handle on it, except that you know we're two months past where it should have topped, and it's not topping. And so you've got to be able to say, you know, this thing is not working. And so you you know you really uh, you can't say that the Bradley model is working. So I'm just using the pattern. Uh, then there's another Bradley date on October 8th, and I believe that uh, we're going to sometime we're going to come down between now where we are now into uh, October 8th to the 11th. That's what I'm looking at. But there's one chart that I wanted to uh, show you today that comes from um, uh, Merrill Lynch, their Global Investment Strategy Division, and it basically shows the um, inflows of money and on uh, this past week uh, we had a record inflows of money coming into the market and if you'll notice back in 2008 2007 when they were leaving the market that was at the bottom the same thing in in uh, in October of 2010 and, uh, and if you look at 2007 when the market was uh, rallying that was a record we took out those records I mean, we've, this was an all-time record uh, number of weekly inflows into equity funds. And so, uh, folks, this, this party's over. Uh, I don't know where, uh, you know, you know, where it's going to go from here, but unless we take out that high that we made on the, uh, on last, uh, on the 18th, or actually it came in on the 19th of September, uh, I think we're, we're heading lower. That's, that's, my, uh, that's my feeling on the uh, on the. On just looking at everything, the market's reacting very, very badly. If it was really good, it wouldn't have given it all back uh, in one day. You know, much like uh, like it did in, in in the indices, with the exception of the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq didn't uh, you know didn't actually you know give it uh, much uh, give up much at all. So that's the the bottom line of uh, you know what we're watching. But all of these patterns that we're that we're looking at, they're just uh, they're just tremendously bearish. We've even formed. A long-term, uh, you know, bearish butterfly pattern uh, in the uh, Nasdaq, and it also came in at a 1.618 uh, expansion of that uh, low, or from the high in May to where we were in June. Now, remember that the Nasdaq has made a 1.618 expansion of that move. The New York Stock Exchange Index has made a 1.27 extension of that move. Uh, the Dow Jones has gone up uh, to about 1. Just under 1.27 of that move, so it's the Nasdaq that is pushing the market up, much like it did in 2000. Whether that's going to continue or not, you know, we have to we have to wait and see if that is going to uh, you know to be the case. But we've had so many of these things that uh, are lining up, and they have been. I mean, it's not just recently. This last little push was the thing that took it, you know, to the final high. If we take a look at the uh, if we take a look at the S&P, uh, that SPY, which is ETF for the uh, cash S&P, you'll see that it's also making a 1.27 expansion of the high from 2007. And so that's telling us that, you know, we're also making a big ABCD at that point. This is not the place to be long stocks, folks. And if you look at that wide-ranging bar that we had in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you have to be scared at least I would be. I know the trend is really strong and everything, but you have to be uh, relatively aware that uh, something you know dramatic could actually uh, happen. That's not uh, you know it's not too good. Now we've talked about this five wave reversal pattern, and I wanted to uh, show it to you in the uh, Dow Jones transportation average also because 
it's doing the same thing where you make the one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle pattern. This was um, Gartley's uh, favorite, one of his favorite patterns, and also the one with the highest probability of working. I think it's better than 85% that this uh, that this pattern actually uh, you know works. And so, uh, with the high that we made on the 19th, I believe that you know we're heading down uh, in stocks. That's what it looks like. Just if nothing else, the way that it reacted to the news of the market was not a very good thing. There's just no other way. That you can uh, that you can say that there there's just nothing that you can uh, do that's going to convince me that this market can go higher uh, after that reaction to that news. What are they going to tell us next to try us to get us to the point where we are we're going to be going uh, going to be going higher in stocks? I don't know. With that record inflow of money, that's another giant red flag. I mean, why all of a sudden everybody comes in? I mean, we're, we've been going up for five months. Now everybody wants to come into the market. Come on, give me a break, guys. You got to have a little bit of uh, common sense in these things. That's 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 my opinion anyway. Might be wrong, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, we do have a um, a really nice uh, potential here for a good rally in the Treasury bond market. Uh, I think that uh, when we take a look at this, we made that three drive to a bottom pattern uh, at the 61% retracement off the 2008 low. And uh, right now, uh, the last rallies that we had, uh, we had one in uh, 2012 that took us during September and October. And then we had one in uh, 2013, early in uh, February and March. And here we are in September, October, potentially, where we could get up to the 136, 137 level uh, in the uh, December Treasury bonds. We're trading at basically 132 right now, and that would be at a 382 retracement of that move and I think that would get a you know big move to the downside. Uh, we've talked about this head and shoulders pattern that was in the uh, doubt in the, excuse me in the in the Treasury bonds and that certainly fulfilled itself. The first objective was made uh, when we made the uh, 1.27 expansion of the shoulder to the head and the time was right you know everything is correct so this now we should be in a rally phase uh, in the bond market and we will discuss uh, more of that uh, you know, after we come back from the break, because I think that, uh, you know, the bond market is the one that's probably going to be the one that uh, caused the, the demise of uh, some, ma some major players here. There's a huge, with these huge inflows of money coming into the market and nothing happening, that's not very good, folks. I mean, that means everybody that bought this stuff, you know, over the last, you know, several days is losing money. And that's, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of volume. A lot of big money came into that market, and it's all disappeared. And you have to ask yourself, why did it disappear? You know, what what is the Fed seeing that we're not seeing that prevented them from stopping the, the tapering program? I don't know if that comes from tapeworm or not. I'm not sure. Okay, we got to take a break here. 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, someone asked a question. I had Bill Foster. Uh, he used to write the, uh, he's an astrologer, he used to write the Rocky Mountain Forecaster. Uh, and I had him on last year, and, you know, he was looking at a, a situation where he was going heavily short the, uh, uh, I think it was about six months ago, it was right before the May high. And uh, he was going short stocks and short bonds in a big way, looking for a million-dollar move. Thus far, he's breaking about even because stocks have gone up, but bonds have gone down, so it's basically pretty much a wash trade. Uh, I'm going to try to have Bill on again uh, relatively soon, if I can, to see if he still thinks this is uh, going to be uh, correct or not. I, I'll have to wait and see. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for all of you that sent me the emails thanking me for having Mark Douglas on. I appreciate it. I'll have him on again. Uh, you know, relatively soon. It was fun having him on, and he's uh, he's one of my closest friends, and certainly a good uh, uh, good person for the psychology, you know, of the market. I want to mention something here, folks. You know, I do these shows, uh, you know, because I enjoy doing them. You know, <laughs> it's uh, I have known Tom for many many years, and uh, I, I really enjoy doing the shows and the affiliation with everybody. But if you're in a key, uh, in a plan for your 401ks or any of these things, I highly recommend that you go to Steve Rhodes's uh, webinar for trading. Uh, Steve happens to be a really 
an efficient person as far as the psychology comes in. He's incredibly good with the patterns, and uh, I think this would be a great opportunity for you to really get involved in money management and handling your own account. You know, take you know control of your own responsibility and do this yourself, and he can lead you there. I mean, he's got a great way of doing this. It's all uh, spelled out. It's quite methodical, and I really highly recommend uh, you know his webinar for Steve Rhodes that's coming up. You can find that on www.tfnn. It's uh, you know it's way under a thousand dollars, so there's only two days left if you want to uh, you know get the good price on the uh, the, uh, the price of the webinar goes up uh, if you don't do it these next two days. So try to you know uh, do that if you get a chance. It's really worth the it's really worth the price of admission um, because you know he's a strong believer in the patterns. He really understands the psychology, and he spent a great deal of time developing a money management system for it. So. I really do it. I don't do these commercials, you know. I do these because I think I can help you. That's why I do them. I don't do them for any monetary uh, gain at all. So let's get back to the market. I posted a chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. To me, they. Uh, it, by the way, if you sign up uh, in the next two days, you save 25 percent. So that that in itself is a good incentive. The uh, this is the most important chart of the whole week, in my opinion. Uh, this is the euro versus the U.S. dollar on the daily basis. Uh, this is the uh, beautiful one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle pattern. But what's unusual about this one is, besides the larger uh, one, two, three, four, five five point reverse wave, there's a smaller one that's happened since August. Uh, it started when we had the new moon on August the uh, the fifth or sixth. Uh, we came down uh, into the uh, new moon into September, and we went up into the full moon of September to make another one, two, three, four, four, five move. And if you'll notice that long-ranging bar that we had uh, due to the Federal Reserve, you know, making their uh, announcement of no tapering, that took the market up to that 1.27 level uh, perfectly. And it's been there for several days now. It's been there Thursday, Friday and now Sunday and Monday, so it's been there for quite some time, and it's held that level uh, without any uh, without any trouble uh, at all. So this is the key to me. If we can get above 136 in the euro, uh, and that we're trading at 135 right now, a little bit below 135, but if we get above 136, that telling tells me that the Federal Reserve has decided to trash the U.S. dollar. I don't know where the money's going to flow to. It'll probably go to the euro, but you know they have problems like everybody else. The long-term pattern in the euro is incredibly bearish. You know we topped three years ago in the euro up at 160 area, and all the highs that we've had have been um, you know lower highs on the weekly basis. The and so we've been in this massive triangle, and I believe this is the end of it that we're seeing you know coming in at this particular uh, level of that 135 and change uh, that we hit. Uh, over the the course of the Federal Reserve doing the thing, the the uh, the emotionalism that was there during that time was really amazing to see what was happening on CNBC and Bloomberg. I just wanted to see the reaction to what was going on because, uh, you know, the Dow was uh, I think down about 20 points and then ended up being up quite a bit. Okay, we got to take a break. If you have any questions, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. 
In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Bessel Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Bessel's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Bessel's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to bring in uh, one comment here uh, about uh, some personal things. First of all, I got a... Uh, some changes from my AARP, American Association of Retired Persons. I belong to that as part of my Medicare. And um, they sent me their updated uh, changes b because of the impending changes with the Obamacare. Folks, it's 136 pages. It's the size of a small phone book, and it is all in small print. Anybody that can read this and understand it is, I call them, to ask him to give me the, the bottom line. The lady says, well, you'll have to read this yourself. And, I mean, it is unbelievable all the things that are happening. I've noticed uh, in the past month that my prescription charges have gone up uh, 30%. So we, we've got some uh, increasing charges coming to uh, us uh, uh, very soon, for at least uh, uh, the older people do. Uh, and I guess the younger will, because we've got to pay for this somehow. So it's going to be interesting to see how the economy handles these increased costs. I know that the people... Uh, that are hiring folks are wanting to hire temporary employees as opposed to full-time just because of the fact that, uh, you know, that this thing is costing, you know, so very, very much money. So we'll see how it moves along uh, down the, uh, the food chains as people start to understand what's really happening. 
we have incredibly good medical care here in the United States compared to other countries. But, uh, boy, it's going to cost a lot more, it looks like. Uh, the next chart I wanted to talk about is going to stay with the currency theme here is because we have a, an absolute perfect uh, five-point reverse wave going back to last uh, May in the, uh, the British pound. We went up and we made a, uh, a big expansion of the one, uh, a little more than 1.618 off of the last uh, three to five move. And, uh, of course, we had the big uh, reversal, but it hasn't gone down much, you know, since that point. Uh, here again, if, uh, you know, the pound gets above the uh, 162 level, you know, it could go uh, a great deal higher. If the money comes out of the dollar, it's got to go somewhere. It's either going to go to the euro, the yen, the pound, uh, you know, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. It's got to go to one of these, uh, one of these other currencies. Uh, if it does that. Uh, it has a lot of support at that 80 level. That's a five-point reverse wave in the U.S. dollar index, just like we're seeing it in the euro, because that's pretty much a mirror image of what the dollar does, because the dollar index is 53% weighted, you know, with the euro. So when you see the euro, you're basically looking at a mirror image of what the dollar is doing. So it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be interesting here. We're over this real serious cycle, uh, you know, what I mentioned before about the full moon and the equinox. And the equinox, uh, those, those equinoxes and solstices go all the way back to the Babylonians. They were the first ones to talk about those uh, when they were doing their seasonal planning things uh, using uh, astrology and stuff. And that, that was 7,000 B.C., folks. So this has been around for, uh, you know, a great deal, a great deal of time. Now, the next currency that I wanted to focus on, uh, the reason why I'm showing you the currency, folks, is because you, you remember the, the movie uh, uh, about Watergate, I can't remember, uh, All the President's Men, was that it? I think that's what it was. Yeah, that might have been it. Uh, with uh, Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman, it was about, they said, follow the money. In other words, you know, if you want to know what's going on with something, you know, follow the money. And that's basically you know, what we're trying to do here. And the Japanese yen, we topped in the, the Nikkei in, you know, late May, and we've had three higher, three lower tops, and we've had, you know, three lower bottoms. So it's in a giant triangle in the Japanese yen. And if we can get the yen, uh, the yen dollar uh, above the uh, 101 level, I would think that the, the people would be moving out of the uh, yen into the dollar. So we'll see if that's going to, if that's going to be the case uh, or not. So, um, you know, I, I think that's the easier, the easier trade of, of all is the euro because the euro has got such a beautiful pattern, as does the, the British pound on those reverse point waves. But those are the ones that I would be looking at to try to get short if those patterns are going to be successful. And they're as perfect as they get. I mean, they, they line up with time and price and, you know, everything that you could ask for. And then with the cycle coming in, my goodness, this is uh, this is Mother God and country stuff. So we'll see if that's uh, if that's going to you know remain uh, remain the same. Now we need to switch over to the gold market here, folks, because we've had some really wild action in gold here uh, the last day or so. Uh, and remember, we rallied eighty dollars from the low on the 18th of September to uh, the high we made on the 19th. The market rallied uh, eighty dollars and then came all the way back. Uh, to make a uh, 78 percent, almost a 78 percent retracement of that move, we went a little bit below the 61 percent retracement that came in at uh, you know 13.22. Uh, uh, we went down to I believe 13.15, and so it's still uh, down on the day, but uh, it's holding that level. But if gold does not hold 1,300, and you know it's not very far away, only 27 dollars, that's going to tell us that we're probably going to go. Uh, a great deal lower in gold, all the way down to the uh, $1,233 uh, per ounce level. So this is a really critical level in gold. To have this much action where you go up $80 and then come down, you know, almost 60 you know, in a matter of a few hours, uh, it's really, really quite, uh, quite amazing. Now, on the, on the other hand, on the bullish side, uh, should we be able to get gold above the 1380 level, uh, that would be, you know, going above the 61% of this last move. That would signal a move that could take us well above the uh, $1,500 level, but that's still a long way, you know, down the road. It's been, um, it's been pretty, uh, pretty rocky here, uh, going up and down in the gold market 
uh, recently, but if you went down to a 30-minute chart or a 15-minute chart, if you had the, you know, the capabilities of doing that, you'll see that these numbers that we've been looking at you know, in the Fibonacci sequence have been hitting just about spot on. I mean, it's either 618 or 786 as retracements and 1.618 and 1.27 as, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, as the expansions. Now, in the silver market, because, you know, we, we keep an eye on silver because, you know, it's the, the baby sister to gold. Uh, the, the, they call it the, the wicked, chef's, uh, wicked stepsister. Anyway, we, uh, we had the same thing happening uh, in the gold, where we have really strong support coming in at the 61% retracement at the uh, $21 per ounce level. Now, we're trading at around $21.89 right now. And, but with those really wide bars, you have one wide bar going up and one b wide bar coming down, it makes you wonder whether uh, this market has fully completed, you know, its correction. So we'll have to, you know, give it some time to see if it's going to, uh, if it's going to hold these levels. It's a critical day in here to see if it will do this, but we will know more, you know, by the time we get to Wednesday's show. And, of course, on Thursday's commodity show, we'll certainly have, you know a better idea of what's uh, what's going to uh, what's going to happen. Uh, I think I wanted to get the uh, I think I have the VIX one here. Yeah, I wanted to show the VIX index because I think this is uh, pretty important too because we had all this money coming in to the market yet the VIX index could not uh, could not go below the uh, 786 by very much. It couldn't close below it, and that was on a day when you know the the market was really quite crazy. And so as long as we can stay above this 13 uh, level in the VIX, I think we've got a chance for the VIX to rally. There's no fear in the market at all, folks. Uh, people are absolutely complacent, which uh, that's not a good thing usually. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Now, I wanted to, to, uh, to I've got, only got about another 15 minutes here or so, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the astrology part of what's happening because I'm writing a book uh, with Shane Schmoley on the, uh, the astrological implications. It's called The Introduction to Financial Astrology. And uh, there's actually going to be three volumes. This is going to be the first volume. And uh, we are concentrating on the lunar things uh, to give people a really good idea that the lunar things are incredibly accurate. And you, you just basically could just you know, buy on a new moon, sell on a full moon, and you'd probably be able to see the same thing. Someone asked a question, you know, where where would I see to get the DC mini short, and that's right where we're trading right now, 1294. That would be the trigger mechanism because that's uh, right at it broke below the 61% retracement. So any close below 1294 in the December e mini, I would consider that as a, a pretty significant spot, you know, because of that wide ranging bar, folks. That's very very ominous. That that should scare the death out of anybody. Uh, that's a technician because that's telling you a lot of power, especially you got to think that's that's with really good news, guys. What are they going to do? They're going to drop the rates to zero again. They're already at zero. You know, they're going to add more and they're going to go to 185 billion a month. I don't know. Maybe they will. But uh, and if they do that, I'm sure the dollar will go in the sewer. But, uh, you know, we'll have to that remains to be seen if that's going to, to be the case. But this is uh, this, the VIX has held up so far. There's no fear. There's a lot of complacency in the market. But I was on the, the topic of astrology. Uh, what happened on the 19th was a multiple, uh, many transits. In other words, all kinds of planetary things were lining up perfectly. In other words, they were trading at 180 degrees or 360 degrees, you know, the conjunction or opposition. They were at squares, which are 90 degrees. So all of these were lining up. Now, we don't get another one of these transit uh, formations until October the 10th. So from that's three weeks. So my assumption is that we are going to be going down hard into October the 10th. Now, during 1987, when the market topped, on October the 2nd, we had the same type of pattern. where We had a lot of transits occurring on October the 2nd. Primarily, we had a Venus Uranus at that time. But uh, from October 2nd to the 19th of October is when we had the big down move. Now, I'm not saying that that could happen, but I'm preparing myself for it. So if we, if we go below 1290 uh, in the S&P, uh, futures. I'm assuming that we're going to be coming down really hard into October 10th. Uh, all we need today is another really strong day down in the market, and that would tell us that uh, you know we're most probably heading heading lower. And a strong day is more than 90 points in the Dow. 
or 12 points in the S&P. That would be my definition you know, of a strong day down. I don't look at the NASDAQ because it's, uh, it's only a few stocks. And, uh, you know, they're, they are they are cap-weighted, but, boy, these stocks are so expensive that they weight the distribution, you know, quite a bit. So we'll see if uh, that's going to be the case or not. The one thing that I could, you know, if, if I have to bring any of my old experience in this is that when the news is really bullish and the market doesn't go up, something is wrong. Think of it the other way, folks. How many times have we seen, you know, the news be the most bearish at the bottom? You know, it's always that way. You know that the, the Gan used to W D Gan used to have a saying saying don't be afraid of high prices, they're there for a reason. And he said don't be afraid of low prices, they're there for a reason, and that's really what you're doing. And, and what we're doing with pattern recognition is just say, yeah, these are the numbers where the market should stop at, and they've got to be the most most bullish at the top, and they've got to be the most bullish at the bottom. So if the news does not reciprocate with that you have to ask yourself the question what is it that's going to make this market turn that's the question because they certainly pulled a lot of money into the stock market on thursday and friday there's no question about that that was a record so we'll see we did you know uh, quite quite a few number of shares too so that was another thing that makes one wonder whether the uh, market is going to uh, be that uh, be that way or not now, I think it's very important. Uh, next one, I have to talk about one more commodity uh, here because I think it's really important what's happened today. I put this in the newsletter uh, this week. Uh, after we had the, uh, the crude oil make the butterfly pattern up at the 112 level uh, per, per barrel, which was the 786 coming off of the high uh, at the 143 per barrel level back in 2007, uh, we, we've had a strong consolidation in and then once we broke below the 104 level, that set up a target of at least uh, $100 per barrel. And we're trading at 100 and, under 103 right now, or at 103. So we've got another couple dollars to go to the downside to see if oil is going to hold at this $100 per barrel level. The price of gasoline has been dropping dramatically. Uh, that hasn't been following through, you know, like the price of uh uh, of the crude oil, so that's going to be uh, an interesting situation if crude oil doesn't stop at this hundred dollars per barrel level. It could be, you know, in another you know major bear market uh, to the downside. So those are those are some of the things that I'm watching, you know, on a on a global basis to uh, to see where we are. Uh, someone asked a question about the emerging markets, folks. Those have been in those have been in a bearish bearish mode for so long that uh, I can't even remember the last time we had anything. You know, really positive uh, happened with the uh, with the global markets. So uh, all I can say is that it's probably uh, you know something that will probably be uh, triggering something in the in the emerging markets that will uh, make it look even even more bearish than it already is. You know, give me a second here. I'll try to update because we've had a really nice uh, bear market rally in the emerging markets, uh, uh, c continuing on you know with the downtrend that we've had. If I can get my charts to update, we will be in good shape here. I think we're all right. Uh, no, we're not all right. Give me a second, and I'll see if I can get this upset, uh, get this. Uh, it's not giving it to me. But the emerging markets are still making uh, bearish patterns uh, to the downside. There's just, uh, unless they, you know, they can't even take out the, the May highs, let alone, uh, you know, make new highs. So that's it. We're going to take a little break here, and we'll come back. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, about the uh, gold and silver. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. 
That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now you can get a 30-day free trial to The Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to The Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. And I was able to get the emerging market chart, uh, the ETF for that, the EEM. I was able to get it refreshed, and I posted it into uh, Tiger TV. And as you can see, uh, this last high that we made was a 786 off of the other high that we've had. So we've been coming down on lower highs for, for quite some time. It was a, a nice Gartley sell pattern uh, at that point. So, you know, the rest of the world is still, you know, hoping that we're going to pull everybody out of this. And we'll see if, in fact, we do. We'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of uh, talk about China now. Uh, that, that market has been going down for several years. It's had a pretty good rally along with the rest of the things. But uh, the question is, is whether it's going to continue or not. We'll have to wait and see. Now, the last chart that I wanted to post into Tiger TV I think is an important one because it's uh, it's the gold chart on a weekly basis. And uh, we, we made that Fibonacci point um, in, in late June uh, at the 1170 and change level per ounce. Uh, then we had a very good rally, an ABCD rally. It took us up to 1435. 
then we had the little pullback last week that stopped right at the 786 at 1286. And now what I'm uh, assuming is is that we are this is our uh, we're in the fourth week down, and if we can get one more week down into the area of around that 12 uh, uh, 1237 level, about a hundred dollars from where it is now, that would be a 61 percent test of that uh, the last uh, you know 10 weeks of uh, action, and that would give us a very good opportunity uh, where I think would be a long position in gold. Uh, because it's uh, it's still a very bullish chart, folks. If you think about gold, you know, bottomed in 2003 at under $300 an ounce, went all the way up into uh, September of, uh, you know, 2011 at $1,932 per ounce. And, you know, we are, you know, well into the second year of that correction, and yet the market was only able to correct 61% of the move from 2008 that is in self, uh, itself a very bullish chart. That would be very similar to what we were looking at with Apple when it got down, you know, to the three uh, three ninety per share level. You know, it took uh, it took quite a long time for the Apple to go from seven hundred three to three ninety four, but that was a perfect A B C D pattern, and that's what we're having in in gold right now. We've hit the sixty one percent retracement. The question is is that what will be the next uh, reaction low that we're looking at here. It was either last week uh, at that 1287 level, and if the, excuse me, yeah, 1287, and remember we rallied $80 in a matter of a few minutes, and then we gave back $60 of that. So if that doesn't hold, that will take us down to the uh, 12, uh, 1235 level, I believe, which will be the 61% retracement of that move. Silver is actually holding up a little bit better than gold. Uh, it's uh, it, the, the re reactions have been less in silver than they have been in gold, which is a positive sign. Unfortunately, we get very little help with the open interest and volume. Uh, I mean, there's no record volume or anything happening. The open interest is doing pretty much nothing. Doesn't increase very much. Doesn't increase decrease very much. It just stays pretty much the same. Uh, so it's going to be a, a real tug of war here of who's going to win this bull or bear. Um, uh, fight that we have going on. If we break out of the dollar, in other words, if the dollar tanks, uh, it would be very difficult to, for gold to go down, in my opinion, because the money will want to go to something at least strong and safe. And, you know, the, the old adage is the man who has the gold makes the rules. And so that's uh, where I would assume where things would happen is they would move to the gold market and we could have some, you know, really good fireworks you know, much like we had it during 2011 when the market took off. This big correction we've had in gold did not correct very much, folks. It was very small. That's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August, when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades, resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 129%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFNN.com.